things. I failed as a shopkeeper. I failed as a farmer. And after failing at those two professions, I did what many failed businessmen do. I became an attorney shortly thereafter. <laughs> after the last 10 years, we have seen one act of provocation after the next. The British ministry has attempted to tax anything they could. So, Mr. President, I hope it will not be thought disrespectful to those gentlemen who preceded me if I speak forth my sentiments freely and without reserve. This is no time for ceremony. The question before the House is one of awful moment to this country. For my own part, I consider it as nothing less than a question of freedom or slavery. And in proportion to the magnitude of the subject ought to be the freedom of the debate. It is only in this way that we can arrive at the truth and thus fulfill the great responsibility we hold to God and to our country. Should I hold back my opinions on such an occasion through fear of giving offense, I should consider myself guilty of an act of treason towards my country and of an act of disloyalty towards the majesty of heaven, which I revere above all earthly kings. natural for a man to indulge in the illusion of hope. We have to shut our eyes against some painful truth and listen to the sound of that siren, hope, until she transforms us into beasts. Is that the part of wise men engaged in a great and arduous struggle for liberty? Are we inclined to be among that number who, having eyes, see not, and having ears, hear not? Those things which so directly affect our temporal salvation. For my own part, whatever anguish of spirit it may cost, I am willing to know the truth, to know the worst, and to provide for it. I have but one lamp by which my feet are guided, and that is the lamp of experience. I know no way of judging the future but by the past. And judging by the past, I wish to know what there has been in the conduct of the British ministry for the last 10 years to justify those hopes which gentlemen have been pleased to solace themselves in the house. Is it that insidious smile with which our petition was received? Trust it not, sir. Let it not prove a snare to your feet. Suffer not yourselves to be betrayed with a kiss. Ask yourselves how this gracious reception of our petition comports with those warlike preparations which have darkened our soil and covered our waters. Are fleets and armies necessary for a work of love and reconciliation? Have we shown ourselves so unwilling to be reconciled that force must be called in to win our love? Let us not deceive ourselves. These are the implements of war and subjugation, the last arguments to which kings resort. Ask yourselves, does Great Britain have any enemy in this quarter of the world to justify this grand accumulation of armies and navies? No, sir. She has none. They are meant for us. They can be meant for no other. They are sent to bind and rivet upon us those chains which the British ministry has so long been forging. Well, we have done everything that could be done to avert the storm that is now rising before us. We have petitioned, we have remonstrated, we have supplicated. Our petitions have been ignored. Our remonstrances have produced additional violence and insult, and we have been spurned with contempt at the feet of the throne. There is no longer any room for hope. If we mean to be free, if we mean to preserve and violate those inestimable privileges for which we have so long been contending, we must fight. I repeat it, sir, we must fight and appeal to arms. And to the God of hosts is all that is left to us. They tell us we are weak, unable to cope with so formidable an enemy. But when shall we be stronger? Shall it be next week or next year? Shall it be when we are totally disarmed and a British guard is in every home? Shall we acquire the effectual means of resistance by lying supinely on our backs and clinging to the phantom of hope? until we are bound hand and foot. We are not weak. If we make an effectual use of those means which the God of nature has placed in our power, three millions of people armed in the holy cause of liberty and possessing a country as that which we possess, we 
are invincible. It is in vain to extenuate the matter. Gentlemen cry, peace, peace. But there is no peace. The next gale that sweeps down from the north will bring to our ears the clash of resounding arms. Our brethren are already in the field. Why stand we here idle? What is it the gentlemen wish? What would they have? Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, almighty God! I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death! Patrick Henry, everybody! A quick bit of housekeeping. September 23rd and 24th here at 7 o'clock, there will be a protest against Ahmadinejad. Coming to the U.S., a free Iran protest that happens here all the time. September 17th, if I was told correctly by a member of the crowd, is the actual birthday of the Constitution. Something to remember. Where are my organizers? Where are the people who put this together? Michael Fell, Mark Harris, Megan Barth, Jim Cover. Ladies and gentlemen, it's cigar time, people. You are the single most delightful group of people we have ever known. And the crowd you have seen today is nothing compared to what's coming next. Kiss each other, kiss your children. God bless the United States of America. Don't forget to sign the board and we're sending it to President Obama. We love you, we thank you. Good night, Los Angeles. one more announcement to make if you're paying attention. If you want to see a display that will touch your hearts, put together by these two folks of the Pe uh, Pepperdine College Republicans, they have a wave of flags, flags that are at least this big, that represent each person that lost their lives in 9-11. How many? 3,000 flags that line the corner of PCH and Malibu Canyon. So if you guys want to take a nice drive tomorrow, it's or even next weekend, it's there through uh, Friday, September 18th. They have over 3,000 American flags on display. And thank you guys for doing such a thing. Thank you so much. Last night, it's awesome. See, Michael said it's awesome. And I bet it is. Land is yours.